Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Have you ever seen my sign? It's really called that. I'm really excited to share today's two cards because they involve something that I am all about these days. You know, you know what that is? Stencils. I'm all about stencil. And I think they both turned out really cute and I'm gonna stop yapping because, you know, let's, let's just get into it. Two card projects featuring stenciling are coming up next. So here's the first card I'll be creating today. And this is a more traditional inking through a stencil. I love how clean and simple the result is. And for the second card, I pulled out some embossing ink and just smushed that through the stencil, added some powder. And this one is a little more involved, but you know what? It's also pretty clean and simple. So let's take a look at the supplies I'm using today. So here are the two stencils. This is just the simple stencil duo. These are USA two sized, so they're four and a quarter wide by five and a half inches tall, and they will fit on a typical card front panel. I'm also using the Thank You For Being A Friend die, and I'll show you the size here. It's a nice size, and it's all one piece. I've got a whole rainbow of Gina K Designs ink cubes that I'll be using for my projects today. And I've also got some of Gina's new blender brushes, and I picked these up, and now I'm gonna use them just with my Gina K inks. Plus, yeah, a few things as we go. To start out, I've got a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound. I am going to score this so that it will be a top folding USA 2 card, but I am not going to fold it because we're making a one layer card. So, keeping it flat so that I can bring in my stencil, right? line it up on the card front, just tape it into place, and now I can put this pattern right onto the card front like magic. I'm gonna take my pink brush, I have a brush basically for every color of the rainbow, and what I do to clean it off is just this, grab a paper towel and just rub it over, and that's just to get any of the darker ink off, because the first mm -hmm. color I'm going to use is Dusty Rose, so this is lighter than the second color, and all I'm gonna do is go in with a really light hand. I am being mindful not to go all the way to the edge of the stencil because I just don't wanna transfer any of that ink to the side of the card panel base. All right, loading up with the next color. This is Passionate Pink. I'm gonna tap a little off just because this is a stronger color. And again, overlapping a little bit where the first color was laid down and lightly adding in color number two. And all I'm doing here is working in a beautiful rainbow, right? You can't go wrong. I mean, you I guess you could go wrong, but nine out of 10 times, you're probably not gonna go wrong, so trust the rainbow. Mm, yeah. Sweet Mango is the orange, and then coming in with Wild Dandelion. Again, overlapping a little and just blending it through the stencil. The green I'm using is Jelly Bean Green. Love this color. And I've got a brush for each one, right? So I don't have to worry that I'm gonna have some muddied weird colors. And that is a good thing. The last color is Ocean Mist. And blending that in. And now comes the reveal. Did it work? What will it look like? Ah, uh, I think that looks so good. It's so simple, but how happy is that? Seriously, you could top this with any greeting any sentiment, stamp anything on there, and you got an awesome card base. I'll go ahead and fold this down, give it a nice press, and now for the greeting. I'm gonna take this die and die cut it. I thought I'd bring you over here to where my Gemini Junior is. See, it's plugged in over here, so it's hard to stick it where I actually film in the craft slash dining room, but I'm gonna pop on the plate sandwich, and I am desperately in need of some new plates. I have some on order and running it through, go ahead, take it. Of course, I have to move the machine because the wall's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna move on its own, but there it comes. So that's where I die cut. Machine's kind of heavy and they're coming out. And now I will bring this back over and take the die out. And here's something I learned, and maybe many of you probably know this, but I didn't know this with the Gemini Junior. You can go back and forth with it a little. Like you can stop it before it's done, bring it back a little, reverse it, go back a little. I did that on the second layer that I'm going to use for this 
greeting and it cut way better. But either way, if it doesn't pop out right away, which normally with my Gemini it does, I always take a little piece of foam so that I don't bend the delicate parts of the die and just poke, poke, poke until it all pops out. But again, going back and forth on the second cut, it was so much easier, but still, there you go. Thank you for being a friend. And we've got two. Now here's my spray adhesive. I wanna show you something. Does your spray adhesive ever get gooped up? If it does, I have a solution for that. Grab some undo. If you don't have a bottle of undo in your craft space, this stuff is great. What I do is just like drip some onto the nozzle, wipe it away, clean and easy. It's good stuff. I also spray on a box that I keep by my floor. You can see my cute slippers there. That way I don't breathe any of it in and it stays away from my camera. I get a little nervous with the, uh, the spray and the, the, the fumes and well, you know the story. Now it took a while to get this lined up because this is a very delicate die and you can see how it's in different pieces so that it could all be joined together. It's quite clever actually and you know, it just takes some time. I like to show that it actually takes me some time to do this because I think it seems sometimes like it's easier to stack these delicate dies and it, you know, it, it takes some time. But when it's done, you'll feel so good. Unless you mess it up, then you'll feel bad and you can start over. It's just paper. It's just paper. But I had an idea. I decided I was going to grab some press and seal because I wanted to make sure that that B and that E looked good, but also that everything was lined up. So I stuck it on the press and seal. What this allowed me to do is just make sure everything is perfectly straight because this little die is delicate and wants to shift. So once I had that down, I'm gonna grab my connect glue, just dot on my liquid adhesive, and I'm gonna make sure that I hit every little serif and slab and area, right? Dot that all on. You can see I've got it all covered. And then I'll just flip it over, drop it down, visualize, make sure it's lined up. Looks pretty good. I brought in my T-square, but then I thought, well, you're not really gonna press it down, so you're gonna commit. Just commit and press. Oh, press and seal, man. I learned this from my friend, Laura Basson, and uh, it's, it's really helped me with placing things down. Okay, the peel and reveal. Gently peel it back on itself, although mo my press and seal is old. It never sticks or hurts anything. But I'll put a brick on that, let that adhere, and then I'm gonna finish with silver sequins. I thought five silver sequins would look nice, so we're just, we're picking it up putting a little dot and boop, booping it down. Picking it up, isn't that fun putting that sequin right, boop, right there on the, on the dot of the eye? Sometimes I amaze myself, I'm just gonna say it. Not, not often, but mostly when I'm crafting. Oh, I love it, I love it. So cute, right, so simple. That heart pattern, fantastic. All right, let's make another card, shall we? Now for the next card, I'm just gonna do simple ink blending with the exact same colors. So, laying down the dusty rose, bringing in the picked raspberry. I'm speeding this up because, you know, it's, it's ink blending, you can you get the idea. But I'm going at a diagonal, because I, I like diagonal ink blends, I think they're fun. I think it adds energy to a project to have that little bit of an angle. But, bringing in that rainbow. And here's the thing about Gina's inks, they. They dry back smooth, and it's it's really cool to see that what you start with, which might seem like, well, that's a little blotchy, isn't it? It will dry, and it just smooths out because there's a smoothing agent in the inks. So keep going until you get it how you like it, you know? And then you walk away. Well, you don't walk away. You got to next step, right? I'm going to take a panel and cut this down a little because I want this to be a little smaller for my card project. And once I have that trimmed, I'm sticking some tape on the back and I'm gonna powder up this panel and secure it into place on the star panel, just like that. And you can just visualize, right? That looks good. And then I'm gonna take this sparkle powder. I thought this would look kind of fun to do. I've never done this. I've never, I don't think I've embossed or used ink through a stencil like this. So I was holding my breath, but I'm loading up my foam tool. This is the only time I really pull out a foam tool. 
is just to smush embossing ink through the stencil. Load it up, smushing it down. And once I have smushed through all the stars, and I'm holding the stencil down too, just to keep that ink going just through the stars and not spreading out underneath those shapes, then I'm gonna take off the back, and you can see they're there. And then I'll sprinkle on my powder. Now this is basically a clear powder that just has some sparkle to it, so will it work? I didn't know. Hold my breath and release. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and actually when I saw this I thought, oh man, I could have done white powder too. White powder would have been cool. But we're moving ahead. I'm just going to brush away any errant powder flakes, get my heat tool hot, and melt. And you can see because it's this clear sparkle, they kind of disappear. So what this does, it just creates this sort of texture and tone that's there, right? But it's subtle. Sometimes we want to be subtle in our card making. This, look at that. Subtle. Okay. I put some foam tape on the back of this panel. I'm gonna pop this up again on a USA2 card base. And for the greeting, I just took this hello, die cut it off camera, stacked them together, glued them, and now I'll add the liquid glue to the back and then just pop this down right in the center. I think that's very sweet. Like I thought about sequins, I thought about other things, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna let those little stars speak for themselves in the background because it's subtle, right? Get that lined up, and we are golden. Let that adhere, and that's the finished card. So you can see that nice little sparkle and shine. It's subtle, but again, same inks, and a different use for the stencil. So those are the two card projects. I love how they turned out. I love, I think I like the one on the left better just because it's more clean and simple. What one do you like? Hmm, tell me in the comments below. Let me know. Two cards. I love how they both turned out. Mmm, so cute. Thanks so much for watching today. All supplies are linked below the video. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel so you can come back and hang out with me in the craft slash dining room soon. Well, not like in person because I, I don't think I'd, I think that would be weird. Yeah.